everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me as usual are my guys Rodney McLeod, Gerard Powers, and today we are going to be going over and previewing this week's game against the Las Vegas Raiders. That's another one of those teams that is very difficult for me to actually say the city name first because of the changes that has happened, right? It's like Chargers and the Rams and you know, so many teams move around so much, but I'll tell you what, uh, the, the, their stadium is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, yeah, I, I like it too. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say basketball is back. Bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online as your continued source for all sports wagering information. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on your favorite sports and events, whether it's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So we got two teams coming in together that have just had really disappointing pointing seasons this year the indianapolis colts three five and one after their debacle uh against the patriots and the raiders losing to jacksonville 27 to 20 they're sitting at two and six let's face it guys uh this is a a game that uh at the beginning of the year during preseason you looked at it and you go this is going to be a heck of a game to watch or play. Or And now you're looking at it going, there's five wins between the two teams. Um, <laughs> what are What is something that could get fans excited about watching this game upcoming? Uh, Gerard? Let us go out there and throw a couple bombs and we catch it and score some touchdowns. <laughs> that, that's, what's, that's what's going to get fans excited. Score some points. That's what we need to do. Um, I mean, obviously, the record is not what we want to be. Obviously, us, you know, firing our head coach is not what we wanted to be. Um, but, you know, you look at both of these teams, man, and it's still some uh, uh, some great players on both rosters. So I expect it to be a, a, a well-played game, a hard-fought game. Uh, Rodney and the defense is going to have to play lots out or, you know, the Raiders are capable of putting up points. I mean, we know. We know the Raiders are the past. We know – Derek Carr and all those boys, the weapons, Darren uh, Waller and uh, Devontae Adams and all those guys, you know, they're, I don't think their record speaks to the, um, to the type of team that they have. Like I said, if we don't, if, if defensively we go out there without the right mentality, these guys can hang 40 on us. You know, they got that type of star power. You got a good running back in Josh Jacobs. Um, you know, you got some weapons that you're going to have to really game plan, uh, game plan for, uh, so, so even though the records is not what we need need it to be for both teams, I still think this is going to be a high quality matchup. But uh, we're we're on offense for us. We're going to have to score some points if we want these fans to get back excited, man. I think the defense has been doing is the best that they can possibly do all season. Uh, so maybe with Jeff coming in, I'm pretty sure he's going to be calling his buddy Peyton for every advice possible to try to get this offense going and different advice and stuff like that. If we can come out there. And that first drive with the offense, if we can put up seven, I think the fans will be fine after that. <laughs> All right. Rodney, what, what what's the defensive mindset right here? Who Who is the main guy to defend against, do you think, against, uh, <laughs> with this Raiders offense? Because they got so many. He named all these guys, Renfro, Adams, man, Waller, Jacob. Man, I forgot about Renfro. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot man, about you got to I mean, <laughs> have your attention on everybody, but it's hard not to uh, – Notice 17 out there for sure. You have to know where he's at at all times, where he's lined up. Uh, you saw what he did last week in the first half alone. I think mm -hmm. he had about 100 receiving yards early in that game, and we have to minimize that. Uh, Josh Jacobs stopping a run. He's a great runner, runs behind his pads, uh, has the ability, man, to take it the distance, good power. So, And then you talk about Hunter Renfro in the slot. Uh, my guy, Mac Hollins, that I played with in Philly, man, is 
you know, he's an under radar guy, but he's sneaky, uh, you know, and, and so then you got the tight end Waller, you know, whether he plays or not, but I mean, across the board, I mean, every position on that field is top notch and got some guys that can go. And so for us, man, we have to bring our best. Uh, you know, nothing changes, you know, at the end of the day for us, man, we, we understand the task at hand is a great challenge for us. Uh, probably, probably like one of the best, to be honest, uh, that we face this year, literally from the X Z slot tight end and running back position and quarterback and Derek Carr yeah. can also pass the ball. And so we're going to have to step up in a major way and, and show up, man, going into this game, obviously, head coach out you got jeff saturday in i don't want to say it might feel like the beginning of a of a season like some new because it's a different energy now that we're going to be coming out of the locker room with hitting that field with what's probably one thing that you kind of looking forward to going to this week i remember me as a player man I, i used to hate the bad losses you know like 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 a new england like the past new england game a yeah. loss like that, man, I used to couldn't wait to get back to practice, to just get that feeling out of my system and get to Sunday. And I, I, I used to tell people all the time, like, man, the only thing I hate about football is you got to wait seven more days to play the next game. So what's the feeling right now that you're having personally about this week and getting to Sunday uh, to play the Raiders? Yeah, man, my mindset is really – it was like that the moment I got on the plane and just having conversations with guys. And it, it was like, look, this is a, it's a new season. And this is before uh, the, the coaching change happened yesterday. But at the end of the day, man, we got seven opportunities left, seven or eight opportunities left, whatever it is, right? I can't even mm-hmm. think. But that's it. And like when you, you know, you really think about it, that's all we're guaranteed. And we just treat it as a new season, man. It's a short season. It's like college. Yeah. Like we got seven of these things, and we going and we gonna go ahead and check off everyone off the box as we go through to give ourselves a chance to make it. It's playoff mode right now, like yeah. that. It, it's simple as that, and that gets me going. That's enough for me to motivate me to drive me. You know, what I'm saying when I come back in the building on Wednesday, knowing like this is a one game season every week, like. We've been saying it, but no, it's it's like it's true now. It's getting to that point in the season where we got to make this run, mm-hmm. and we and we got the guys that can get it done. But we gotta we gotta believe. We gotta keep everything tight, and we gotta go out there and just work, man, and, and grind and put it all on the line. That it, it, it's it's that simple. And so when I really you know thought about that, and, and that's where my my frame of mind is, and really preaching that to the guys, like man, we could do this. Yeah, it's just seven, for sure. like. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. want to go home? That's it. And and I and I like I like that. <laughs> I no, like that I mode. like it. I like it. And going into this game, and just off of the past games that we played, what's one thing you think defensively we need to get better at? Even though we've been playing good good football, I know we haven't been perfect. Yeah. Uh, by any means. So, what's one thing that you've seen on film that you think that as a whole we can get better at defensively to even help our team even more? to make sure we win this game this week? Man, it really comes down to just turnovers, I think, uh, for us. It, you you know, you see them. We haven't been as consistent, you know, as we go game to game. And last week, like I said, we got one, but we had an opportunity at two more. Right. And we have to, we have to really uh, keep the mind, keep our minds on the football. And that starts at practice. Uh, and it translates over into the game. So I, I think for us, if there's a next step for us, it's that it's the turnovers. It's it's man keeping them to to ten. I mean, you you see right. teams doing it right. Like right now, we got to figure out how do we not even let them cross the fifty. You feel me? Like right. how do we get to that? How do we get to that level? And then how do we create turnovers? Because that's what it is right now. That like that's what it's going to take. Like. We got to challenge ourselves and it might not seem realistic, but we got to strive for it. Right. Right. Got you. Absolutely. Got you. Got to be dominant. I got you. Dominant. Those are, those are great, great questions. Great answers. My, my big question is coming into this game, uh, Gerard, uh, with the new head coach being 
you know, known as, you know, that, that emotional leader offensive line. Can he, do you think he finds a way to get the most out of the offensive line and get this running game uh, and, 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 and stuff like that going to help this defense so that they're not on the field so much? I mean, I think he's just going to try to help the offensive line. And I mean, even though he, he wants to help the defense, uh, I think right now Jeff probably is just trying to worry about fixing that offensive line and letting all the other assistants, you know, be their, be their own head coach in their room. Uh, you got to think like Jeff, like you, like you said, you know, he has no experience at doing any mm -hmm. of this. Um, so I think he's probably really focusing on trying to help that offensive line and fix the issues and making sure that we have some type of running game, because that's the only thing that's going to help Sam at the end of the day. If we're not able to run the ball and we're going to ask Sam to win the game, throwing the ball, it's not going to happen. We're going to need our run game to, to, to come to life and uh, be dominant. Like we know it, it, it to be Jeff, is going to do everything that he possibly can, but there's no guarantee that he's going to fix stuff overnight. So, uh, like I said, I think he's going to rely heavy on his assistant coaches really taking onus and being head coaches themselves of their room and going out there on Sunday and hopefully everybody putting it together and it works. One thing I'm kind of excited to see Jeff on this uh, Jeff Sunday is just how, what's his attire going to be on the sideline? Is he going to look like NFL ESPN reporter Jeff, or how is he going to look as Coach Jeff? I'm I'm kind of excited to see this new image of Jeff because I haven't really put a visualization on him. Like what would he look like as a head coach just on the sideline, his gear and everything. So <laughs> me knowing Jeff as a player, he was a sharp dresser as a player. Uh, don't get me wrong, but. I'm kind of excited to see just that aura and how he presents himself and carry himself on the sideline. Cause like you said, you know, he's an emotional leader, Rodney. Like he's a guy that he's going to voice his opinion. He's going to get guys riled up. He's going to get guys ready to go. And I'm, I'm excited to see that energy on the sideline, just how it looks, you know, with him as the, the, the head of the team. Rodney, have you met Jeff Saturday? And was there a, a time when Jeff showed up? I know that he's showed up I for speaking points and stuff like that there with the team i didn't know if he he's training camp all right it was uh for a, a quick second uh coach let him speak to us i think it was after one of our walkthroughs uh before uh the day got started so it, it was good to just hear from a great player like jeff and like I said, don't know too much about him. Obviously, remember him from back in the day, seeing clips. And there's one surfacing <laughs> that him I've seen Peyton. on Twitter, <laughs> him, him and Peyton getting into it. <laughs> so that just shows me everything that I that I need to know. And I guess, and then they had a big man stepped in too. Uh, <laughs> big Tariq. Yeah. Big Tariq, yeah. <laughs> I said, man, that's that. That's, that's leadership. Intense. That's intense. And that's true leadership right there. Yeah. Absolutely. I got a quick, I got, before we go off, I got a, a funny story about Jeff. So uh, 2009, we're getting ready to go to the Super Bowl, right? And I, I'm pretty sure y'all did the same thing. So before we left to go to the Super Bowl site in Miami, you know, I, you have a big team meeting. I know with us, they told everybody to bring their significant others and all this to this team meeting so everybody can hear the itinerary, the mm. plans you know, and everything going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I remember Bill, Bill Polian was our GM and uh, he's a hall of fame GM, one of the greatest GMs to, you yeah. know, touch a football, but he gets up there and he's like, Hey, uh, you know, we're going to do this on Monday. We're going to do this on Tuesday, you know, Wednesday curfew is this Thursday curfew is that. And uh, Peyton interrupts him and was just like, Oh no, we're not going to do that. Hey, curfew. I know you said it was at one, but it's going to be at 11 at this night and it's going to be at 12 on this. Like Peyton, mm. you know, and, Bi and Bill's like, all right, yeah, we'll we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it. And then <laughs> Peyton, then, no, but listen, but then Peyton also said, so when we went to the Super Bowl, all the players was on one floor and they had another floor for all family. Yeah. But Bill was like, hey, if you're married, your wife can just stay with you in your own room yeah. because everybody know how expensive the rooms and stuff get, Yo. you know, for Super Bowl. So Peyton interrupts him again, like, oh, no, nah, we're not doing that. Um, you know, I don't want no family, no kids, no none of that on our floor. You know, they can go to another hotel or get another floor. So Jeff, ironically, I'm sitting by Jeff and his wife. 
And uh, when they said that, because everybody already knew the plans going forward, because I had already told, you know, my fiance, my wife now, fiance at the time, yeah. like, hey, yeah, we're not going to have to buy too many rooms. Like, you get to stay with us, uh, whatever the case may be. But Jeff's wife was by him, and she looked at him and was just like, you're not going to say nothing? And Jeff was like, what the hell do you want me to say? That's Peyton and, and Tia. Like, what do you want me to say? But, uh, quick, so that's Jeff. Like, he's a, a great leader, great guy, but he's also a guy that knows how to follow and, and knows the basic fundamental principles yeah. of, of what it takes, you know, to be a leader. But, you know, Jeff's going to be a great guy. I, I hope he does a great job. Yeah, man. Wow. That's hilarious. Yeah, Dang, Peyton, boy. Hey, yeah. hey, Payne said, nah, nah, nah. nah none of that going that. on. We ain't doing none of that. <laughs> Wednesday curfew at 11. <laughs> so, and, and so the wife really not stand with me or kids, boy. No, none of that. None so of that. When, when, when they say that Peyton Manning actually ran the team, they they, they weren't lying about that. I mean, yeah. well, no, I mean that, was that, that was just that one that one instance. But, uh, but Payton was right, though. You didn't want kids running on the floor, family yeah, going man. all crazy. Uh, because you know it's hard. I've, I've never walked in Peyton's shoes, but obviously Peyton can't go anywhere without somebody stopping him, asking him for this, asking him for that. So yeah. players definitely need their privacy yeah. uh, when they, when they're at the hotel. So yeah. okay, all right. <laughs> and you only get one shot at that Super Bowl. Yeah, no question. Yeah. So you got to keep your mind focused on 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 the task at hand. Yep. Speaking of the task at hand, we have the Colts and Raiders this Sunday. It's time, I believe, to. Uh, make our predictions for the game. First thing I'm going to say is we we talked about on the last episode about McDaniel's, you know, job may be a little bit hot. After what's happened with the Indianapolis Colts and all the firings, if the Raiders lose this game, it's going to be really bad in Vegas. I'm going to tell yeah. you that much. Really, really bad. And I am hoping and praying that the Indianapolis Colts walk out of this with a win. All right. Uh, it's be awesome. Continue to see the defense play lights out football, even against the Raiders. Uh, like you said, Rodney, this offense has been, you know, they got so much talent. They just haven't lived up to that talent yet. Let's not have it. This be the game where they do that. Right. <laughs> okay. Yes, um, sir. All right. Rodney, what's your uh, – well, yeah, Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> are we winning this game? <laughs> man, I'm I'm foreseeing a win, you know, oh, from the Colts. We coming up big out in Vegas, man. We're going we gonna to do it right and enjoy that long ride, you know, back back to Indy. Absolutely. I mean, we got eight games left. We could finish out 11 and 5-1. and five and one. That'd be – that'd be Yeah, good. there's a lot of football left. Yeah, still a, a lot, lot of football. football left. Absolutely. Gerard, what's your uh, – what's On your the road – on the road, long trip, I think with everything that's happening, we have some Colts magic. Jeff finds a way. We get a victory. And I must say 24-21. We went, we went on a last-second field goal. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Um, the Indianapolis Colts history with the, the Raiders. Raiders always play us tough. It doesn't matter if they're having a good season, a bad season. doesn't matter. Ever since uh, Derek Carr broke his leg, uh, against us, he has really done very well against our defense. Now I'm hoping that uh, this year is a different story. Um, we got a lot of new players playing a lot better uh, than we have in years past. So I think that we still will be able to uh, give the Raiders problems on offense. But the problem is, is I have zero faith in our own offense right now. Um, and until we can see uh, our offense get out there, see what uh, Jeff Saturday could do with the offensive line, get some protection, get the run game going. Um, I, I, I can't, I can't go with the Colts in this game. Um, I, I hope I pray. I want the Colts to win, but if I'm going to be honest, I got the Raiders 17 Colts 10. Another low scoring game, huh? Yep. Gotcha. Yep. But prove me wrong, Rodney. Prove me wrong, please. I got you. <laughs> All right. With that being said, this was Believe in Colts going over the preview of the Raiders Colts game this coming Sunday. Uh, that was Rodney McLeod and Gerard Powers. I'm Lawrence Owen. And until next time, as usual, go Colts.
Do you believe? 